This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Dear Dad, So, you're still dead. It's been 31 years, and every day I have to remind myself of that fact, and every day I am shocked. You and I only had 19 years together, and so when I think of you, I'm still 19, and you are... What age were you? To me, you were just the right age for a dad. Old enough to be clever and young enough to be handsome. Probably about the age I am now. Blimey, that's weird. I will soon be older than you ever got to be. That's not right somehow. Parent is supposed to be older at all times. The natural form is I get older and you get just old. Then, and only then, should you be permitted to die. Even that should happen in front of the telly after a bowl of stew and a cuddle up with your missus. Not the way you died. Not like that. I'm not nineteen any more, Dad, and so many things have happened that you haven't known. So I've decided to write this book for you. I want to remember our time together, and I want to tell you about lots of stuff since. So far, it's been better than expected. Dear Dad, I'm having trouble remembering my very first memory. Each time I try, I think I'm stealing other people's first memories that I've either read or been told of. I can't remember looking out of my pram at an adoring mother. I can't remember being shocked at the first sight of my own pudgy baby fingers. I can't remember the oddly delightful feeling of a nappy full of hot new poo. Actually, on second thoughts, I can but that came years later. There is something I can remember vividly, and when I experience it now, the effect is visceral. It takes me thundering right back to a mysteriously timeless, but definitely very early, blurry memory. The smell of my mother, of mum. A heady aroma that embodies birth and life and strength and sex and safety and fags. Whatever perfume she adds, this smell is always there as the baseline, and for me it's magnificent, and it announces that I'm home. I swear to God her cooking is flavoured with the same scent, which is why none of us can replicate her recipes. You have to be her to do it. I guess the scent is the code, the method of imprinting between a mother and child, and it is so potent. Sometimes, even now, I snuggle up to Mum just to get another headful to nourish me till the next visit. I don't have such a strong early memory of you, Dad, although I do have one of something that happened when I think I was about two or three. I remember creeping into your bedroom while you two slept and crawling under your bed. I'm not quite sure why I did this, but I suspect it was the thrill of being hidden while being so close. A sort of delicious invisibility. I did the same thing again years later at boarding school, more and on. It seems a bit pointless to eavesdrop when those you'd like your eaves to drop on are fast asleep, but I suppose the joy was in the anticipation. Any road up, you might remember a frightening thing happened. The bed was the kind that had low metal bars and bare springs beneath, and I only just managed to squeeze under. I must have had my hand inside one of the springs when one of you moved, resulting in a crushing pain as my little fingers were trapped. I shrieked and woke you up. You leapt out of bed, full of confusion and dadly alert. You reached under the bed and, with a bit of gentle coaxing, pulled me out to safety, and I ran into Mum's arms for comfort, and most likely to smell that healing smell. All of this was fairly unremarkable, except for one thing. You were completely naked, and although I was in agony, I couldn't take my eyes off that weird, dark, dangly, wrinkled thing. What was it? I'd never seen you without your pants on, and for some scrambled reason, the first conclusion I jumped to was that you were being attacked by some kind of nocturnal, bed-intruding, vicious, hairy, saggy, mole-snake creature. Naturally, the correct course of action, considering you had just rescued me from certain finger death, 
was to reciprocate, so I lunged at your assailant with mighty force, thwacking it as hard as I could, trying to dislodge its tenacious teeth from your groin. However...